uh, all this craziness. Aaron is blocking everybody. Aaron is a, a, a a-hole. Aaron is this. Aaron is that. But I'm not just out here just blocking people for the hell of it. No. And, again, the person who's saying that, especially like even like Jeremy. Like Jeremy saying I blocked him for no reason. All that, oh, Mr. I'm the victim guy, that, that don't work. There's a backstory why I blocked you. I didn't come into this sport to make friends. I am a true athlete. I'm too competitive to play with people. I don't. I, that's just not how I want to do it. And I, some people were like, oh, that's not the right way to go about it. Well, you're talking about another man's life. You telling another man how to run his life? No. All right, so Happy New Year. We're back, uh, and we had a surprise visitor. I got a call yesterday, and the new, the new, the new Mr. Olympia physique champion who was highly predicted to win this title, it Aaron was, Banks. It, it was. We, we appreciate you coming out and checking us out, man. You Congratulations. Know I, you know I had to come see you, man. You know I had to come see you, and thank you. I appreciate it's it. It's kind of funny because when we, we kind of discussed you coming on, we talked about it because, you know, we're on, obviously, you know, the same teams for a lot of stuff. Right. I mean, Trifecta, Celsius, Young LA. It's we crazy. It all, right? Right. And, uh, you know, it was funny because Matt's like, we're going to get him on when he wins. Hey. Matt, let's go. <laughs> it's here. So It's here. So we had the Olympia a couple weeks. Was it two weeks ago? or Two weeks, which is yeah, crazy. Yeah. It feels like a week. And, uh, too. you know, you came and did and conquered and did everything you said you were going everything. to do, which is crazy because, I mean, you're a fairly newcomer in this yes. in this division. I mean, as far as being a top, I mean, you came to your first Olympia, got, what, second? Second, yeah. Without, and, and that run was crazy in, in itself. You know, I, I was kind of feeling the whole, because, again, me being new, um, didn't really know anything about men's physique. I didn't, I didn't even know – who are the top guys even in men's in men's physique? I know, but like this is the thing with uh, how many contests did you do in men's physique before you, you know, got a pro card and then? So I went, I went pro in four months, and I did two NPC shows and went pro. Where? Uh, so I did the Fresno Classic, which I only did true novice. I didn't even do the open, so I didn't qualify to go to nationals. Yeah. And the head judges were like, um, are you not going to do open? I'm like, ah, I didn't know anything didn't about it. You want to pay the $100 extra? <laughs> yeah, so I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. Again, this is my first mm -hmm. show. And then next thing you know, he was, um, at the time, I don't, I don't remember the promoter's name. He was like, do the show in two weeks. So I went down to Contra Costa. Mm -hmm. That's where I got my nationally qualified. Um, I used to guest post there every year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Contra Costa, was it still at the uh, Chabot It College? was, yeah, it was like same place. Yeah, I mean. it's been there for a while, but I, I think they moved it to some other place. And um, again, when I got nationally qualified, I went to the USA's and I played second, actually. I didn't even win, win and you got first. Your card. So I got second, got my pro card, and literally went to doing absolutely nothing, Jay. Like, literally, I told my coach, I was like, man, this is crazy, prepping, life, eating asparagus and fish. And I was like, oh, I can't. I need a, I need a vacation. So um, from there, I, I sat it all down. Next thing you know, COVID hit. And I'm just playing video games and uh, uh, eating enchiladas and just being a dad at that yeah. point. You know what I mean? And, and that's one thing I, I really take pride in is my kids. So. Next thing you know, I'm like, man, I, I should do something with this pro card. Let's let's see let's see where it goes. And again, the pandemic. So I found a private gym to start training again, and then ended up hitting Ariel, my coach cuts, and from there, history like kind of just itself. transformed you to yeah, it was so much greater, right? It 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 took me to a whole nother level, and I didn't, I never knew um, I could tap into my mindset so like so effectively. Like, it really went from partying, drinking, back and forth to L.A., having fun, to nothing. Prep, prep, prep. Was this, was this the first time you started? When did you start actually training? 
For bodybuilding or, or in general? In like, general? Did, did you work out when you were younger? Did you? Like, he was yeah. an athlete. Oh, yeah. So played I was all a, sports. I was a yeah. three-sport athlete, played football, basketball, ran track, which I don't run. I'm a jumper. <laughs> uh, long, triple, and high. And um, did track and field in college, football in college, and then came back home and kind of started my life with um, – as a – I worked at Buckle back in the day, and I uh, worked there for nine years. But at that same time, again, I was still working out, trying to – Stay in shape. And then next thing you know, um, became a fashion stylist. That's when I got truly out of shape. Like, because that was the L.A. lifestyle. It, it was nonstop. I mean, we, how did you get into the, like, how did you become a fashion stylist? So here's here's the backstory on that. Um, after leaving Buckle, I, mean, I was so into fashion. And um, you still I, are, dude. I mean, you still got some good <laughs> swag going on. <laughs> I, I try my best to keep to keep to keep up with trends still, and um, left Buckle, became a fashion stylist with because there's there's a music group back at back at my home city in Fresno called SWAT Team Music, and um, so basically I became the stylist of that group. These guys were, I mean, we we started off doing local shows. Um, two of the two of the artists on that. Um, on our squad was signed under Jamie Foxx. So at that time, they were doing what they were doing. We were traveling. I ended up meeting Safari Samuels. Me and him became really close friends. Um, if you guys don't know who that is, that's Nicki Minaj's ex-boyfriend uh, or husband, whatever you want to call it. But uh, ended up meeting him, super cool dude, and just literally started networking from there. Um, I ended up connecting and networking with EJ King, which is Chris Brown's old um, and I think he still works with him every now and then. His style is he works with Tiana Taylor and so many other celebrities. So he was he was pretty much one of my mentors um, in the fashion world. Life was like, uh, this this is this, this is not the route. I think. Why God. it seems like it'd be kind of exciting, dude. You're right. It, in the it mix was with all that, and but and that's the thing. Like it was fun. I was around celebrities. I was out doing, but it it was just taking too much time away from my family. Again, traveling. I mean, we. It's, it was like a party from Wednesday to Tuesday, like Wednesday to Tuesday. So it was consistent. We were doing shows in Fresno. We were having reggae nights, Taco Tuesday nights, so many different things. And I was away from home, so I had to. I kind of had to pull back, and that's when I really buckled down. My daughter was coming. My son was coming. Um, literally, started personal training in my own house. I was like, I got to get this weight off of me. Because at that time, I think I was like 268 pounds. I'll I mean, I carried, it, yeah. I carried it well because I'm taller. Yeah. So it wasn't like I was crazy overweight. Yeah. It was just, I was just a what taller What were you dude. eating at that point? Bro, enchiladas. <laughs> freaking, enchiladas is my favorite food. You my normal Ceviches, diet. Ceviches, like, um, enchiladas. You know, it, it, was, it was a lot of Hispanic food because, I mean, of course, my, my wife is Hispanic, you know. And um, it, it, it is just... That, that life that I had to pull back from. And um, like I said, started personal training um, at the house, got my old college workout, my old college workout uh, diet plan and everything, and really just started doing stuff at the house. I lost literally 40 pounds in four months. By cutting off the garbage. Cutting off the garbage. That's it. I didn't, I didn't change anything. I just was doing push-ups, doing P90X every day. Oh, let me get these abs, the abs for X. So when you're saying you're training at home, do you have equipment at home? Yeah, I mean, so we had, we had. I mean, the thing is, all I had was dumbbells, a, a bar, a barbell with some, some fake. I know, but so you, how were you personal training? Like, how were you getting your name Well, I was there? personal training myself. Oh, okay. See, I was training myself. Okay, okay. And then that all transpired to me going out to a local gym, which was a GB3, and, um, that's when I became a personal trainer. I started training clients and that, that became a big deal. I was, I mean, I'm, I was still one of the best personal trainers in the area. And from there, it was a lady named Terry Reeves. This lady, I, I would never, this, you would always hear this in every interview because in 2018, she begged me for a total, like a complete full year. Aaron compete. I, th I think you could do really well in competing. I don't want to be no bodybuilder. <laughs> I don't want to be a bodybuilder. And she, she was like, no, I think you would do really good. Your, your structure is good. Like you have, you have it all. And again, I didn't know anything about bodybuilding, nothing. And one day I told her, I said, Terry, 
I don't want to body build because I don't. And this is this is no knock to you guys. I said, yeah. I don't want my kids to see me in underwear on stage yeah. as a bodybuilder. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was like, I don't want my kids to be like, oh, daddy's on stage in chonies. You see what I'm saying? So, and, and <laughs> even like nowadays, people are like, man, eat banks. You're going to go to classic. Uh, well, my kids would be probably in fifth and sixth grade and their, their friends are going to be like, oh, your dad's on stage yeah. with chonies. Nah. It, it, it's just my personal preference and personal preference. And when she said, no, you can do men's physique. I'm like, what is that? Like they wear board shorts. I said, sign me up. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So, do you know anything about bodybuilding at this time? Like, who who's the first bodybuilder you like read about or you? Really, you? I didn't know nothing. This is this is everything is so. Everybody will say, "Do you know such and such?" I'm like, no. So they like think Ronnie it's Coleman. You don't know. Ronnie See, I knew, Coleman? I knew him. I okay, knew of okay, him. Okay, because my dad would watch him. Yeah, but when I got into it, it was you. I, I was like, okay, Jay Cutler, okay, and me as a as a business minded person, I gravitated towards you because you're so business minded with the things that you do outside of bodybuilding. I know, but like you have to look at someone's physique and say, okay, because never did. Because listen, now like we'll talk about this later, but the standards changed, man. The standard has changed, and the standard has. Changed. I mean, who who compares your six foot what? Six foot and a half, six two, we can call it. So, who compares? I mean, uh, this this guy Raymond Ed- Edwards, well, see, like okay. was your height. Yeah, he, he was. was your height. So, so when I first got into got in men's physique happened, I didn't I didn't even look at the pros when I was in the NPC when I went pro. I didn't even I didn't even think about it. I know, but who taught you how to pose and all that stuff? You taught yourself by watching, watching videos. I mean, I have rhythm, you know what I mean? It's, it's, if you have rhythm, you can move, you, you, you learn different transitions and things like that. You can, and and if you know the the criteria of what they want to see, that's how I kind of transitioned into it. But when I went pro, I got a coach out of the Bay area. His name is mighty Mike. He's pretty, he's pretty nice. And, um, he kind of put my routine together and, he put my first routine together for Houston, and then from there, we I just kind of branched off and kind of just, nowadays, it's just all me. I know. So when we talk about routine, mm-hmm. I don't know what you're saying because you do two poses, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? You say, what the hell? What so, routine yeah. so, 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 how, so men's physique is front and back, Front right? and back, that's it. But there's a lot of... There's a lot of funky things that happen between the yeah. front and the back, bro. Yeah, so here's here's the deal with that. And 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 it's I, gotten crazy cuz you have to it, clarify it yes. too because <laughs> these guys are doing classic poses, they're doing open bodybuilder poses which when you do your homework, you talk to these judges, you get feedback, you talk to Tyler Mann, you talk to these people in higher positions that are judging you. They tell you exactly what they want to see. They say, Aaron, we want to see your front and your back. Yes, you have a, a, a routine, that the, a presentation that you get out there and present. And that is still basically a front and back with a transition to the back and a transition back to the front, and you wave and you get off. So there's only a few people who who have s- simple simple poses like that. And You can have some swagger, though, you, to really you got to have some swagger. Up, right? You have to. And the thing is, you have to have that swagger, but – you also have to stay within the guidelines of do they ever what get, they want to see. Do they ever get frustrated with some of the guys just taking too much time Absolutely. to move through? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen some guys routine up to about a minute and 45 seconds. That is so pointless to get on stage and show yeah. every flaw. <laughs> you got two poses. They want to see your front and they want to see your yeah, back. Yeah. Go up there with your confidence, start your routine. It shouldn't take longer than 45 seconds. At all, that, like it should not take longer than forty five. Are you seconds. still nervous getting on stage? I've never been nervous getting on stage. Really? Um, I was nervous for the longest time, man. And and so many people ask me this question, like, "Hey, how do you feel? Like, were you ever nervous on stage?" And I'm like, the way I prepare myself, there's no way I'm gonna get on stage and be nervous. I practice so much. There's no way. I get on stage. Do you practice nervous. for your kids? Oh, absolutely. My, <laughs> man, my kids are hitting. Hey, Dad, look, see the back pose. And my son's a he's a he's a clown. He's he's just like me, you know. And his personality is funny. He he wants to be just like Dad, which that's what I love. And um, 
that that's they keep me going. They they really keep me going. But uh, with all this posing stuff, these judges don't want to see all the extra stuff, man. It's it's just a front and back. It's so simple, but so many people take it out of context. You would think about that the longer, like you were saying before, the longer you're on stage, the more they're looking at you, the more they can pick you apart. More flaws. So if you get in and get out, don't give them a chance to see your flaws. No. See, when I, when I present, it's, it's, it's like you want to hit your money shots, right? So your money shot is your front pose. Boom. Then I walk into my transition, pose, one second, turn around to my back. My back, I take a little bit longer in my presentation just because it's my strongest point. So when I, when I hit my Christmas tree, I open up, I go wide, I get wide, I sit into it, then I transition back to the front, and I'm off the stage. These guys are <laughs> stepping to the right, stepping to the left, hitting a back double bicep, hitting a side, hitting a side bicep. They don't want to see that. I used to do that. I did that at last year's Mr. Olympia. So when I went to the road to the Arnold with JM and Tyler, yeah. they, where they critiqued the body, they were like, Knock it off. We don't want to see a side double bicep or biceps at all. We don't want to see that. And Jack Sullivan's <laughs> the, the judge, he's one of the ones who hates it. He's like, bro, please tell these guys to stop it. You know what I mean? So that, that's one thing that they don't want to see. And unfortunately, some of these guys don't understand that these judges have things that they are looking for that they're going to knock you for. So you went from lean physique athlete – to overweight, let's call you overweight, yep. right? Back Heck. down to, I mean, listen, I, I've traveled with you. Yes. And your discipline is like top notch. Yeah, like you stay on a diet year round. Mm -hmm. Like I remember where were we somewhere and he was eating his Boston. meals. <laughs> Boston. No, was, but he was competing in Boston, but he was somewhere. Was it LA or, or I think it San, was, um, one of the Fit Expos or? It was Houston. Houston, Houston. Oh, Houston yeah. It was yeah, Houston. Houston, yeah. Bro, I was bringing my freaking meals yeah. to to the restaurant with you guys you know what i mean it was just jay when uh, and it's it's the mindset you had it's the mindset any great has had if you want to be great you can't slack i would never slack i just saw a picture of you though on instagram and you were out of shape kind of in the kitchen or something it was showing oh, your yeah. back and when yeah. was that so that was when i first started with my coach okay okay so i was and i didn't know the poses i and i mean i had some somewhat of the knowledge of the posing but i was just in my kitchen just like trying to hit my back pose just getting a little little check in in yeah. and then from there boom crazy it, 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 it's still mind blowing the um the discipline and the consistent battle that i've been through with with my body um with keeping it and and, and staying so focused so I can't when's, kinda, the, when's the last time somebody won the Olympia so fast? I don't think it doesn't happened, usually yeah. happen, especially I think when it took three years. But it's it, it, it's just you know with your with your come up of confidence, you know. I mean, yeah. you go to the Arnold, and let's be real. I mean, the Arnold Ohio is still the second tier contest. You're, if you win it the is. Arnold, you're the front runner. You know, when I was when I was winning my Arnolds back in the day. Um, I was considered like the front guy to battle Coleman, right? Yeah. Cause I wasn't winning the Olympia. And then, you know, if guys, guys usually didn't sit out the Arnold that were second best, Yeah, you know, usually Mr. Olympia sits out, but you know, you're putting it all on the line, dude. You're going into this year's <laughs> Arnold. Absolutely, man. I'm so a 2023. So no, no time down. I mean, we're eight weeks away and absolutely, man. And it's just, why you, why you, why do you decide this? And did you prepare? Did you already decide prior to the Olympia knowing that you were going to walk away with the title? Absolutely. That it's been my, it's been my plan to continue to keep my foot on everybody's neck. You know what I mean? I am, I probably am probably one of the most competitive athletes out there. Um, again, my background, three sport athlete it, from, from the football field, it, it was a dog eat dog. You know what I mean? And there's so many guys in this, this division that love to chirp. I love to chirp too. But I also was showed up on mm, on that stage, stage. Yeah. and I'm not scared to put my my title up because I know how hard I work. So, therefore, why not defend it? There's not a whole lot of people that <clears throat> that go compete again when they're the reigning champion. Very, it's not very a lot. Bikini does it. Figure has done it. Yeah. Like open, open. The only time I remember doing it was when Ronnie did it. Yeah. A great question for you though. Is it? Do you think it's easier for you to stay 
on a competitive path or to have long breaks of time off? Um, I would probably say both, to be honest. Um, I've from last year's Olympia to the Arnold, there was, I think, how long, how much time? From October to March. So I got probably a month and a month and a half or two months off. That was the longest that I've been off, you know what I mean? And from the Boston to this year's Olympia, it, I was off for a minute. I had a long break. And it it was lovely. And we we were still eating cheesecakes, sushis, all the way up into three weeks out, you know. And my body was just so. I mean, as a as a refeed, right? As a refeed, not as like not just yeah. Yeah. It was definitely a refeed. It was probably I think we were doing every Friday. I think we either every Friday or Sundays. I don't remember, but um, that was. It is just. You told me something in Houston, though. You told me you were going to stay in what range to your competitive weight. I was surprised when you told me this. You told me you weren't getting much over. It was it within ten pounds or something? Or as far as what your weight my stage weight? Or, yeah. Oh, like, so my off season weight. Yeah, off season. Yeah. Versus. So we didn't want to go over eight, eight to ten pounds. We we wanted to stay in that that, that striking range of anything because it, even going leading up into the Olympia, we were planning to do a show <laughs> we were planning to do a show um to kind of help peak me for the olympia but the body was just firing on every single oh that's cylinder. right i you made the announcement you know you said oh i'm gonna compete yeah probably before and it never happened it never it? happened because the body just i mean the body was doing what it was doing and it, it's it, it was a lovely feeling to actually not have to compete and just show up and do what i did so i'm excited wow i didn't I don't even know what to say. <laughs> There's not a lot of people that would just, like you said, just put it on the line. And, yeah. and you know, you won the Arnold and you got second at the Olympia last year. So if you did a show in between, like, you have everything to lose. Nothing. You have nothing to gain. Nothing. Nothing at all. Because if you win the show, you're expected to win. Yeah. If you lose, that could affect you going into the biggest show of your life. Absolutely. So that's, Absolutely. A, that's a big risk. You never, I'm trying to think if you ever, you didn't do any other shows unless it was after the Olympia. I mean, yeah. a lot of people, a lot of Mr. Olympias go overseas or and do a show then. Yeah, it's usually um, after, but all the top guys do. Back yeah, then, they yeah. all would. It was like a mini tour, they don't, which they don't have anymore. I know. it's it's The men's physique division doesn't get enough credit, though, in my opinion. I don't think we do either. I mean, it's, you know, I always say that a lot of divisions, they train the same, they diet the same. You know, they look at men's bodybuilding and they just think, oh, those guys take way more drugs because they're so much bigger. Right. But the truth be told, like, you guys have to still have a guideline of what you do, right? Absolutely. And, you know, just because, you know, you're competing in longer shorts doesn't mean that you're not training certain body parts, Oh, absolutely right? not. I mean, we, we there's so many people that say, oh, where's his chicken legs at? That's what, that's what a lot of men's physique guys have to go through, of course. I mean... It, it, it's just the nature of the beast. You guys are open bodybuilders, and oh, now they're bringing this division with shorts. Like, I, I understand it, but we bust our ass. What do you think? Like, give me a couple of, like, what do you do for lifts? Like, as far as. Like, so, my main lifts, because I like don't. Like, you have the best back in, in men's, you know, physique, right? So, my main lifts for my back has to be rack pulls. That is that is so you deadlift. Hands, yeah, I don't. I stop deadlifting. But you, it's but a I rack pull yeah, lift. It's yeah. I consider same, it still a deadlift. Okay. Yeah. And um, and how much like how much weight do you work up to with that? Is it more contraction? Or are you still pulling you know three four hundred pounds? Man, I can pull six ninety five easily fifteen times. But do you do it? Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> There's a video out there servicing somewhere, man. I I, I pull. I a heard lot of just weight. hearing him say that. <laughs> <laughs> I pull a lot I mean, of weight. I think well, you, you hate when we deadlift. I you think know? you should. I think we should see how many plates you can rack pull. Oh no, there's a record. There's a that's Fit Club has the, but I think that was the, the standard deadlift. But standard deadlift. So yeah. so you and when do, I standard deadlift, I was seven oh five. You stop because of the waist, or I stop because I didn't want to blow the waist out, yeah. and then I also, I mean. Back in playing sports, I mean, I used to tweak my back. Did you ever a lot. want a power lift or? No. No, because those guys don't look fit. To like me. you still do, like a lot of you know, obviously chest training is yes. important. Shoulders, so yes, you're you're absolutely. still moving some pretty heavy weights oh, doing absolutely. that, right? Absolutely, and 
And that was one thing that we target, targeted for this year's Olympia was that chess. You know what I mean? That was one thing they, they told me back in 2021. Hey, let's build your chess. You, you just, I mean, just have a fuller look and you'll be good. And we brought a, a, a crazy full package to Arnold, which we won. But I don't think the conditioning was as good as that year's Olympia. But we were fuller. Went back to the drawing board, got the feedback from the judges. They said, just bring, bring the conditioning in and keep the, full, the fullness. <coughs> Boston was literally, that look was just Spot insane. On. It was insane. And then all we did for this year's Olympia was mimic the same thing that we did for Boston. Yeah, we did some tweaks, and yeah, my back was bigger. Yeah, my chest was fuller. And all around, I think that package was pretty nasty. And, I mean, when you win with a perfect score – that so let's you know let's go back to not this past olympia the one before so you were going into that that was your first big big show yes because you've done did. smaller shows well, what i didn't know small shows matt i won the new york pro <laughs> smaller compared to olympia of and course Arnold. yes of course so that's a, you know, <laughs> look, steve, look. steve will like that you're fucking insulting <laughs> <laughs> come on now <laughs> so <laughs> shout out to steve weinberg Absolutely. Of course, right? shout yeah. out to steve man. that's the third biggest show in the world <laughs> the third. Yeah. it is come on is. let's go now what were your expectations? Because you weren't known like some of the other past Olympia winners. You didn't have millions and millions on right. social media. Were you expecting to get called out in that first call out? Or were you, didn't know if you might get overlooked? Or like, what was your anticipation <laughs> going into that first Olympia? My first Olympia, man, I thought I was going to win it. Um, I, I didn't care about, oh, what character was had, had, had the most following or who mm. name carried the most weight. Yeah. I knew how hard I worked. And I knew that. It I know, was but a, it like, what? Well, your coach obviously must have told you, yeah, "Hey, this absolutely. is legit, right?" Absolutely, and and of course, we stay on feedback. That's one thing me and my coach we do not play with. Every single show, I've gotten feedback. Every time I've gone to Road to Olympia, every time I go to Road to Arnold, what do you guys want to see from me? What do I need to improve on? That is that. That's your homework right there. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing that, if you're not getting that feedback, how do you know? Yeah, you can be like, oh, if your coach doesn't know what to improve on, you're not a good athlete, yeah. or he's not a good coach. No. So, it, so <laughs> when you went, so when you went into that first, when you got called out in the first, so then you realize, like, hey, it's yo, it's a real deal. This is it's game time now. <laughs> yeah. Because a lot of look, a lot of people don't get in the first call out, no. and they might have a great physique, or they might get overlooked, or but absolutely you got called out right away in your first year. And see, I didn't think I, I, I thought they were going to put me in third. How they were moving everybody around, and mm -hmm. I know they try to play with the crowd a little bit. So when they called for finals at 2021, when they found, they called out Diogo for third, I was like, I think I won this show. Like I, I thought I've won that show. And, um, the first guy, the first time doing Olympia, you never win, dude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, and, and, and see, I, and, and it was just one thing that I did and I had to understand because I knew I worked so hard and I thought I won it, but it's just like, Okay, yeah, you're a rookie, dude. Like, so when you look back at the pictures, do you see maybe why you, you got second? and then you Well, made I, I actually heard Andre Ferguson say the other day he thought that you should have won, won in last, 21. Yeah. Okay. And see, that's the thing. Like, I thought I brought one of the craziest packages ever at that year's Olympia. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the judges decided what they decided. Which is it's, okay. Maybe. Which is fine. I mean, and all I did, all I did, go back to work. I didn't I – didn't, do any of the the you talking? Didn't cry about it. Didn't yeah. cry about me losing. I just put my tunnel vision on and went to work. And I said it was. Do you I, respect your competitors? Absolutely, uh, to a certain extent. Until I'm disrespected. Mm -hmm. Period. I, I've I've respected everybody in this division. I have not called anybody no names. I now down talked to anybody. Only thing that I said I was going to do are my goals. A lot of controversy around your voice. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely, uh, and. It, it, it's it's hard to, and I can see where some people come from. It, it, it's hard to. Is it arrogance or confidence? It's definitely confidence because if it was arrogance, it it would come off differently. It would I, I would boast about it differently. Mm -hmm. Confidence is me being who I am, me telling you these are my goals. This is what I want to accomplish, and guess what I did? I accomplished those goals. That's not arrogance. Now, when I say I won the Arnold, of course, I'm okay to talk about Aaron Banks winning the Arnold. Oh, be humble, be humble. So, I'm so, so when I win, I'm not supposed to, like, congratulate myself. I can't be happy for myself. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, again, some people take it 
any they're going to take it the way they want to take it. And I know a lot of people, a lot of fans out there, like they they have their favorites. You know what I mean? And I'm understanding that with this being my second year in this this game. So um, everybody's opinion is they have their own opinion. I'm going to have my own opinion. It's it is what it is. You know, it's a huge different physique from first and second this year yeah. and last year. You know, two totally different bodies. Two totally, totally different. And, you know, obviously you winning the Arnold, it gives you momentum, right? Yeah. Leading into Olympia, and you know you can kind of pick your competitors apart. That's what's nice about working in the pros, especially at the top. Uh, yeah. Like, I was able to analyze every year on what poses not to do, not to do. or when to hit them Absolutely. and how to really – I mean, it's really hard against Ronnie Coleman to – Say okay, let's let's What's point out his flaws, yeah. right? Because he really didn't have a lot, especially Absolutely. from the back. So he was a monster. You know, you're you have a game plan going into these contests, and you know where does it leave this division now? Having someone that's over six feet tall versus you know someone like Brandon Hendrickson, who's carried that title now. What three? He was three, three times three champion, time, right? Yep. I mean, lost it, came back to win it. Yeah. Um. You know, there's other guys in division, your height, but they're just not knocking at your door necessarily. Yeah. You're like the standout of the top guys as far as height-wise, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So how, how can people compete with what you have, what you bring? Um, <laughs> That's, I don't know. That's, I mean, you won with a, straight first, right? Yeah, that's, that's the thing is, and what makes me stand out the most, of course, everybody knows it, it's my back. Is that what the judges' feedback is, though? I mean, what, where do they, where do they say you need to improve right now? Nowhere. I'm the standard. You, I am it. You improved what they asked. Absolutely. They wanted a full chest. I gave them a fuller chest. They wanted me to stay tight, like the Boston in 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 the the last year, previous Olympia show. That's what I did. I brought a crazy package. It was just what they wanted to see. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Let's What's do it. the best package? you've ever brought to the stage? It has to be between this year's O and Boston. Okay. It, it, and, and, I, and that Boston package was, was something. And, and it, now listen, it, different still, stage, different it's lights. It's the lighting. Oh, okay. And I think it was the lighting. Boston was Would ooh, they have a black spot background? On. Yes, just, black background. It makes up a difference in the, the, the it, skin tones The lights and everything, and everything yeah. was just hitting at Boston. So that's where I think that was my best look. I would probably say my best package on stage is this year's Olympia. But my best look from, if we're looking at pictures and, and analyzing it from that standpoint, is Boston, for sure. Yeah, it's so it's, so hard, it's so hard to, to compare different shows. Like you said, the, if the, the lighting's lighting. different, you don't know if someone looked better or not, even Can't. if you're sitting there. Because if, if the lighting's great at one show and it's not at another, someone could be in crazy shape. And if the lighting's off... Yeah, you can take, take, for instance, like the background, the, the back... The backstage at this year's Olympia, that little blue lighting looked way better than the lighting on stage. Mm -hmm. And you can even see in some of the videos that people were posting out there, like they look crazy under that blue lighting that was backstage versus <laughs> the background was just, it was just so much going on in the background. You, some of these guys look washed out. How do you fit that many guys backstage at the Olympia? Well, well, prejudging was I, I actually you had better than I yeah, thought it yeah. was. Um, and thank God it wasn't for finals. Years. They brought how many guys back? Just ten. Oh, it was okay, 10. okay. But still, it was, it was crowded. I mean, the the room wasn't no bigger than what we have yeah. here. But then you have open, you have bikini, you have a lot of space, a lot of bodies. Physique, you have bodies in back there. There's ladders. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we got they got it done. We got it done. So, what'd you get for the Olympia? What'd they give you a a glass? A a, a glass, uh, yep, a little glass vase. And what that, do you do with these trophies? Well, I'm, I'm I'm trying to build something like you got up here, man. I got a I got a couple shadow boxes. I got a shadow box for um, my Arnold win. I got a shadow box for my, my my rookie year, second place at Olympia. That's that's still something special for me because again, there hasn't been a rookie who's done what I've done that year. Um, and then I just got my shadow box for this year's though, and it looks pretty damn good. What's your what? What's your anticipation? Like, do you have a goal in mind for, like, a length of time? Or? Absolutely, I do. And I, I told my coach this when we first started. I said I don't want to go longer than six to seven years. 
It went, if I'm 40, I'm done. And what, what is it, family, or is it just, hey, I've done enough? It's my kids. Like, I want to be a coach for my kids. I want to be, I want to instill what my my knowledge in my kids. You know, it's it's more of me wanting to be a father at any at any point. You know what I mean? I, I would drop anything. How hard is it being a dad, being a competitor? <laughs> it is a different lifestyle. It is a different lifestyle from, it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I would say it's better if you have a routine mm -hmm. because kids tend to just do whatever they want. They need a routine. They have to have a routine. They have to wait. My kids wake up at 4 a.m. like me. Dad, what's up? We doing fasted cardio? No, go get on your iPad. Let me do my fasted cardio. You know what I mean? And it's they'll, they're up. We, we all go to bed around 6, 637. It's, it's the same thing. I pick up. Drop off kids, be dad, go to the gym for an hour and 15 minutes, go be, go get my son. We'll come back to the house, play, feed him. Next thing you know, we got to go pick my daughter up at 2. <coughs> we'll get her. We'll go grab McDonald's for them, and, and we're at the house chilling the rest of the night. And you go to bed at what time? 7.30. Wow. Oh, I, I get my sleep. I was nine o'clock, which I thought was crazy. You know, I was. I get my sleep, and I go yeah. to bed at midnight and still get up. At five. <laughs> no, but I like, still get up at five every day. When I was structured, bro, I mean, I was just. I had to say I went to bed at nine, and I woke up at like six in the morning. Everything was boom, boom. Yeah, boom. it was. I had to get my six or seven meals in, and I trained twice. I was always yeah. weight training twice, even the off season. So it was a little different for me. But uh, so bringing the title back to where you're from. That's huge, Which is, out, where are you from exactly? Is it Fresno? Fresno, or? California. Okay. Yeah, it's, man, it's it's a blessing because, I mean, of course we have Flex Wheeler come from Fresno, and he's been, he's been on that pedestal, you know, because he's the best from our city. He's one of three Arnolds, but even talking to him backstage, he's like, man, you did it. You brought Wait, you, you, you brought it back to the city. And where do you train there? Iron Office. is. Okay. And I got to bring you out there. You guys got to come out there. It, the gym is phenomenal. I wanted to come out and do that seminar that time, but I was booked yeah, in Tracy. You were. Yeah, you were. Yeah, booked yeah, in Tracy. you were. Yeah. So that, that gym is phenomenal. Um, Will and Jazz, they're the owners, the husband and wife. Um, they've done a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job with that gym. They are nationally qualified for powerlifting, so they have mm -hmm. so many different powerlifting events there. Um, the equipment is phenomenal. They have arsenal. They have... Um, some hammer strength. They have so many. So many I've seen great a couple pieces. of your videos of you inside the yeah, gym. It, the gym, I love it. Uh, I love it. It's quiet. It's and again, being in Fresno, it's it's a less distraction for me. You what, know what I mean? I just go in, get in, and go out. What do you think of Las Vegas? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's here. the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I love I love Vegas, and um. Of course, I've been looking on that that little Zillow app, man, and um, <laughs> he sees the prices in Cali versus. There's here. some homes out here, man. I'm like, I can get that for that price. Hmm, <laughs> it, it, it's 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 real tempting. Well, you I mean it's hard with the children. I mean, yeah. changing schools and yeah, education is important. Thing, healthcare is absolutely. important, right? Absolutely. So that's that's the only thing where it's just like, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know about that, but. When Matt was just talking, he was like, man, the taxes, though. Like, the taxes. He's, he's like, tries to con <sighs> everyone to come here. Dude, <laughs> think about it. You were the first one. I, I know, but. Think, was, just think of it like this. Imagine if you would have lived in California in the last. How fucking broke would you be? Oh, I mean, I'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'd be this, 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 this well no, off. No, just think about it. If you were paying almost 14% taxes on top of what you pay now the last 20 years. That's nuts. It's a That's lot nuts. of money. That's nuts. You could go buy another Lambo at yeah, least. We, we, have a, we, have a, we have a good financial team, so we're good with that. <laughs> we're good. <laughs> we, we, have, we live that rich, broke lifestyle. I want, I want to walk to. through this contest a little bit if we can, just to show oh, yeah. some footage because, you know, this is historic. It was the biggest lineup ever. Ever. Uh, ever. You know, you could, you're part of history, right? That, I mean, this was This right here is craziest. when Steve, I believe Steve called just the two, you and Brandon back out. Yep. And why is he dancing here? Uh, I don't know. But I, <laughs> I, I gave him some dap, and I said, "Man, let's 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 put on a show." And um, I think we we did a pretty. He knew good he job. looked good, though, right? He he knew he looked good. He looks good. You cannot take that from him. And people need to understand. So go that. ahead and like, just talk to our audience. Like, if we if we, they've never seen him this is Bra show. this is Brandon, admittedly, probably his best of all it, time. This is right? his best look, and he I don't he didn't look like this last year. He did not look like this last year. But, um, I mean, going through this. What is, is a judge looking for when they look 
at so this pose. At these at these front poses is basically um, they're looking for symmetry, conditioning, um, flow, taper. Um, of course, they're not looking at calves. I mean, Brandon does have a little bit bigger calves than me. I'm not a calf guy, but hey, <laughs> um, they're just overall looking at the front package here. Is the chest full? Are the are the shoulders rounded? Um, are the arms too big? That is that is one thing that these judges are making a big emphasis on. Um, in men's physique, this is not a, 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 a big arm contest. So, And that's where I think I also flow a little bit better when it comes to my physique because my arms aren't overpowering my shoulders. And when we turn to the back, it's just not, you know, it, he, he looks great. He I mean, looks great. Do. But when he sets into his back pose, it's you see what I'm saying? It, it's it's you have a lot different. more width, but yeah. you're a lot you're a lot, lot taller. wider, a um, lot thicker. Um, the taper is bigger. The uh, it's just all, my my rear delts are popping crazy. Um, you can see my front. You can see my front delts from the from the back pose. Um, what do you see, Jay, when you see the this? traps? It's everything about my I'm back. I'm thinking how you, know? you build a back like that. Is that a lot of pull-ups or is that? Yes. That and so uh, a lot of people don't know my background is calisthenics. I used to do calisthenics right. um, shows at the LA Fit Expo. And, um, man, I used to do muscle up 360s. So I that's like, the, like Cali Muscle Cali did a lot muscle, of that yeah. too, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That I did nothing but pull-ups. He won the Contra Costa too, you know. Did he? Well, yeah, when I guest posed out there. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. I didn't know he yeah. even bodybuilded. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, that, that back pose, is it's, it's pretty freaky. <laughs> it's pretty freaky. And it's it just I, – I just – I think I just – outposed him a little bit you know I, I know he's he's a phenomenal poser but i think um i outposed him in this show see i would i would hate to judge something like this because obviously both physiques are are phenomenal absolutely they're great and, and it you know i mean i don't know the criteria as well as you know the judges so do, let me ask you a question good. when you walked out he was behind you yeah. what would you turn around and say to him i said let's put on a show oh, okay, okay. I, I literally said let's put on a show and, um, and how is his? He's okay with you, right? I mean, I mean, Brandon has his issues with me. I don't, I don't, you know. It's, I'm just here to compete. I, I don't need to to go back and forth with people. But um, when it, when we talk about standing on stage and, and getting into these poses, that's 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 where we're gonna sit there and do our talking. That's the talking right here in the back pose, in the front pose, front and back. Got some legs under there, bro. You're still training your legs. Hey, right? I'd got some legs under there. So what are you talking about? Someone would call you they call pencil me, man, legs they, or they something? Or? Pencil legs? Like, I have <laughs> legs. Oh, hey. Got some pretty big legs, actually. I can <laughs> see the quad sweep there. Like, there's some <laughs> legs under there. And, and, of course, Brandon has legs, and he does his, what he does on his Instagram with his classic poses and, and whatnot. But it's just, I just feel, even in this front pose right here on Brandon, when you compare this right here, my waist yeah, more looks taper, yeah. way smaller than his. His waist looks a little blocky in this pose. So, um, is there a reason that, like, I'm just asking because I don't know. Is there a reason that you're standing off, maybe a little twisted, and he's standing straight on? Because sure. it's all about the illusion. Mm -hmm. What are those judges seeing? Mm -hmm. Men's physique is about great abs, great taper. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide this back oblique to make that judge see right through my, my core. That makes my, my waist even smaller. I'm never going to show both obliques in a front pose. That's just not. To me, I think that's how it should be. Mm -hmm. I would never. That, that, I mean, and I know Andre Ferguson does that front pose. You know what I mean? But I just don't feel it's, it's, it's a pose for everybody. Um, I think more of that angle pose. So you is, have a choice on how you can stand. Like, they yeah. don't make you stand straight on. No, they but they used to. Okay. So... They used to just, you just have to just stand straight. And I think you either, they'll just turn you around. And then I, I think they went from just the angle pose. I forget how they, how they used to do it. But I think they went from the angle pose to the back pose. But then I think it just went free game. I don't even know when. So, yeah. posing is, is very. I'm out of this now. 
It's just us talking. Posing is very. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna do one other thing. Go ahead. Keep talking. Is very. Like how much time a day you spend? Oh man, <laughs> me personally, yeah, I'm about an hour and ten minutes. It's just the same. Amount how of can time you perfect as, what you brought? You do what do you work on now? And over just, and over. The just, breathing is 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 my main thing that I do now. Um, because again, when Steve Weinberger last, I mean, this year he didn't really hold us up stay on stage for as long as he did last year. Last year he held us for a good pff, ten minutes on stage um, to see who would break. You know what I mean? And um, from there, um, it's just controlling the breathing. And to be honest, is more of the confidence thing. The confidence you have to be confident in your posing. You have to be. And how do you, um, but what I'm asking is how are you going to perfect this? I'm perfect already. That's, that's I'm perfect. a question. I'm perfect already. It, All right, it, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull this up here just okay. because it's, it's something that, that people talked about. Oh, okay. In, in this right is there now, audio on this? It, there is, but I'm just going to let you kind of tell what happened here. Because the, the, the audio is even hilarious in this one, one like, and I think I think where you, I think I know where you're gonna go with this this question. <laughs> no, it's just because I, I saw people saying, "Why were you standing off to the side like this?" Absolutely. Go ahead. And, go ahead and pause that real quick. Okay. So when Bob Chigarilla calls us to the middle, right? Mm -hmm. We come to the middle together. Yeah. Brandon decided to step in the box like he won. I get that. That's confidence. I okay. I, it's kind of arrogant too, but I decided to step back and look at Bob and stare at Bob. Because I know how hard I worked, and I know from prejudging, this was my show to win. So I just wanted to step back, and I just wanted to stare at Bob because I knew my name was coming. And go ahead and play it. I'm not sure where he's at sound-wise at this point, but and I know he's, he's getting ready to call you He's about up. to call right now because that's when I stood and stared because he stepped into that box, and I think he calls it about right now and very soon and my main thing was okay you want to step in this box you're not even in still it's and new now mm -hmm. excuse me let me take my first place and step into the center what goes box. to your head like the emotion right there because obviously you had a i mean it was it, it was so many different emotions for me being mad sad I, I was it, it was an emotional roller coaster during that um, because again we my aunt passed it was so much going on um, it, I literally wanted to jump out of my body because it was it was a great feeling to look at Greg there <laughs> shout out to Greg shout out to trifecta out there I see y'all um, with with a nice suit though Greg that's a nice suit <laughs> um, the thing was is I worked so hard I I knew I worked so hard for this. And everybody doubted me. Everybody said I wasn't going to win. Everybody called me arrogant. Everybody called me whatever they wanted to call me. And I just proved everybody wrong. And it was just the best feeling ever. Mm -hmm. The best feeling ever. It hasn't sunk in yet, really, has it? Yeah, no. I mean, like I said, I, I, I would wake up in the morning and be like, man, you're number one in the world. Like, you have the best body in the world as a physique guy. Mm -hmm. You have the best abs and physique. Like, you have the best back and physique. You have the best chest. Everything from head to toe, you're the best. I tell everyone it's always just back to work, though. It's right? just back to work. So how do you stay hungry? My kids. Mm -hmm. I got to feed them kids, man. That, that, yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm just and, saying, and like, from, from, a, from a different angle, you got straight first. Right. You're still newer in the industry. It's not yeah. like you've been around for a decade doing right. this. What keeps you hungry to improve, to, be, to stay there? Because now... You climb to the top. Now everybody's going to try to pull you off the top. Yeah. So what do you do to stay there? I just got to keep my foot on the pedal um, and keep grinding every day. Keeping my and my main thing is keeping the rookie mentality, because that keeps me that keeps me as an underdog in my mind. You know what I mean? Because again, as a rookie, everybody doubted me. I'm going to keep that mindset as everybody continues to doubt me. I'm just going to go for the home run and continue to go back to back to back to back to back. Until I retire. Uh oh, sounds like LeBron. It might Miami. be one of those. I'm telling you. <laughs> no, and, and, he was like, and, I'm telling you. Yeah, like, my thing is, and again, I, I even told JM and Tyler this when I think it was the road to Arnold. I said, JM, has there ever been like a person who who's won the Arnold and the Olympia in the same year? 
He goes, mm, not that I can think of. Maybe a bodybuilder. Maybe a maybe maybe a bikini. But Angelica did. Dexter Victoria did. did. Too, yeah. Dexter did. But in men's physique, no. See, I never knew if Brandon won. No, I think he won in 2016, and then he won in 2018. Oh. Um, but he never won in the same year. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know the the history. Yeah. So, and I told him that he was like, "Oh, it's pretty good. That's a pretty good goal right there." Is is is, and I said, "I'm gonna keep that. I'm I'm gonna really hold myself to doing that." And I did it. I really did it. And it's I, very very and very really, limited company that have done that in any of the divisions. I yeah. know, but Eb, what do you want to? What do you? What can you get better at? Is it social media? Is it? I think I mean you're still next, gonna get your name out there a absolutely. lot because a lot of people just still don't know who you are, right? Yeah. I think my main and my next step would be being more consistent with YouTube. Um it is just like I I need a, to get a team behind me with with the whole social media part of it. Um because I, I think I bring uh a different type of energy to the divisions. Mm -hmm to this industry, to IFBB, to to everything that I do, even to Celsius, to Trifecta, any of my sponsors, like I bring a, a, a set of energy that is very unmatched. It's very unmatched. So um, pushing my character, my personality, um, get, letting people um, in a little bit more so they can actually read the book instead of reading the cover, um, which I think would be probably my next big move is the the YouTube and then, the, of course, where I'm thinking about doing some clothing and yada, yada, yada. Would you do a lot more appearances in 23? Oh, absolutely. We have some things lined up. Um, I know you work with Global and yeah, so and everything. I know he's trying to do something with the Arnold Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, I got the LA Fit Expo um, in two weeks. I think you're going to be there as well. Um, so there's quite a bit of stuff that I want to do. I talked to Sandy. I sent her, sent her a, a text message and said, hey, um, you, 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 I've told you this before, and I'm going to tell you this one more time is I'm, I'm here when, when you need me at a posing seminar. And she says, Aaron, you just do so much. And that's, that's one thing I want to be known for is, is always giving back because that's one thing that I am, that I do. Do you find yourself though, it's hard to get on media with the children and going to bed early and do you ever like have where your days are just limited because, you know, being a family guy, Bodybuilding selfish. It's very selfish. And, you know, I was always just, like, into myself. Like, that's what I always told people. I would cut out all, all social aspects yeah. of my life. But it sounds like, you know, have to have more balance for you. How much does it limit you, though? That's the question. Like, how much effort can you put in? Like, you mentioned YouTube. Do you bring your family life into this? Because I feel like people want to know okay, how's this guy all around become who he becomes, who he is, right? Yeah. Because people don't know that a lot about you. Like we just talked about, you know, the fashion background, yeah. and, you know, you putting on weight and then, you know, the, the super fast rise to the top and the coaches and everything we've kind of heard a little right. bit about because you've mentioned them, but mm -hmm. like your legacy, yeah. your legacy has to be more than just Olympia, Olympia champ, champ, right? Yep. Because eventually... You know, you, you're you Aaron Banks, so you just, you know, you have to carry that name. Absolutely. So you only can get better. I mean, we talk about, I asked you about the stage. You're like, I'm perfect. Yeah. Okay, so if you can just duplicate and make slight improvements, slight of course improve, you, you yeah. want to improve, right? Absolutely, you're going to improve I mean, you're going to tweak everything. You're going to yeah. try different things. But the the main thing is not to try too much too craziness much. Yeah. because why would they you know, do they that? Know. They, they, yeah. they know what they want. Don't reinvent the wheel. Can't. So no, it's it's good that you're getting out there and doing more appearances. And I've always said this with any of the different athletes, whatever division they're in, especially in the Olympia champions, don't get out there as much. Yeah, it, it affects the industry. Absolutely. People need it's you can only do so much on social media. There's a big difference when somebody gets to shake your hands and look you in the eye, and you Absolutely. actually get to interact with that person. Every fan you do that with. Gets to know you. They it's know huge. it's authentic. There's a you know people can portray themselves on social media a certain way, and they might not be like that in person. Absolutely. So the more you're out there, the more you travel, the more you represent yourself. Absolutely. You're representing that title because, and I've always said this, and I know some people might not look at it this way. Yeah. You're just you hold that title for a time. Yeah, that's it. It's it's got, not it's not yours. Only you got just, nine more You hold it. <laughs> you hold it until the next show, and then you hold it again until yeah. the day comes where you either retire or somebody beats you that yeah. 
Until then, you're just you're holding that time. So you need to do something with it yeah. and use you that title to. and you represent that title. And, and and that's the thing. Like a lot of people don't really, like you said, don't really know what goes in and out of, of, of Aaron Banks. What is Aaron Banks legacy? But a lot of people don't understand. I'm so into my community, man. I'm, I'm going on my fourth homeless sock drive, um, which I'm, I'm really proud to, to, to be a part of, um, which is my sock drive. Um, I feed the homeless like many times a year. Um, I have two, two superstar athletes that I mentor and train, um, that are both going D one. One will be a starting quarterback as a true freshman next year. Um, possibly at, well, he, he's going to Fresno state and he's a quarterback. And, um, that a lot of people don't know that about me because it's, it just hasn't been on the forefront of YouTube or Mm -hmm. on my page, but Aaron Banks is, Aaron Banks is out there working. Yeah, YouTube is TV, man. Yeah, you know, literally. But those things, like me just hearing about this, I didn't know you were involved in those things. Yeah. So then there, you saying those things, there's people and like myself and you guys talk pretty Jay. often, right? Yeah, I mean, people yeah. like myself and Jay and different brands Absolutely. could get involved in that and put a spotlight on it. Absolutely. You know, but you winning that title, now, use that title yeah, to put, a, the put a spotlight on it's these the things. It's the platform. It's yeah. the platform. Yeah, you, 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 you know, when, they, when you got put on the spot and you're like, hey, what do you have to say for the speech? I, you I, were kind of just like uh, taking it in because yeah. I I was so speechless at that point because and I was just I knew I was going to be emotional because again my aunt passed back in October and tell us about your aunt a little bit. So my aunt was my my mother's sister and my mother's only sister and just even thinking about that is it, here we go. But um, man. My family is probably one of the closest families out there. We su- we've been so supportive of each one another. Mm-hmm. Um, we <laughs> like we can take it back to when we were kids. I mean, even during school nights, we'll spend a night at my aunt's house. They'll my cousins will come spend a night at our house. We're talking about during school weeks, and she was just one of those one of those ladies, man, that just was so caring and so giving, like, damn. But it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful soul, man. Like, unfortunately it happened. And I mean, I won this, this year's Olympia because of her. Like God did, God, God literally did this for us, you know, and we we've tried to stay strong as as possible. We we we've come together, um, and I I can say like we have the probably one of the biggest families in Fresno, and um, she worked at IRS for geez almost thirty years, and just the impact she had at at her job was just incredible. Um, she always kept a smile on her face. Um, she was just off in the off in the community as well. I mean, she kind of showed us the way because she was, she used to. You guys remember Dare? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she was one of those Dare officers that was out in the community all the time, and that that's where we picked up that type of that type of mindset and worth ethic because she was out there in the community with the drugs and t- talking to kids. And we, my my older cousin was the the McGruff dog. You know what I mean? It's just. Rough them a crime dog, remember? The crime yeah, dog. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it's... Only the old people know about that shit. <laughs> a lot of people this, don't know shit, and I'm going, none of these kids know. I remember <laughs> Derek. Nobody, nobody really knows about that. Since, well, we're way older yeah. than him. How do you know about the McGruff? <laughs> well, see, I think I hit that, 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 that point to where the generation switched. I think I was the last of that... Yeah, you Smoking probably only know because of her. Yeah. You probably don't yeah. know because of your yeah. time. You Absolutely. Know? So, <laughs> I mean, well, we had D.A.R.E. programs a lot. Well, my city is my city. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, my city is my city. But it, it's, we've, it's, it's a very interesting city. And um, we've grown a lot. And there is a lot of drug addictions and homelessness there and um so that program has been around for a long time i don't know if they still do that program anymore but um she was just the forefront of it and we we saw that in her um um she's a again she's just a beautiful soul and yvette stevens will will always be remembered 
um, because I'm, I would never let it die. She was just one of those beautiful butterflies that's just... It just, just sounds dreams. like you have so many people to give thanks to because of your success. And we always talk about this thing being individual, you know? Yeah, it's not. It's really not. It's individual on that stage. On that stage. Off the stage. But off the stage, you got to have the biggest support system ever. Like it's routine, right? It's, it's, it's it, like, I mean, from your sponsors to your families to your spouses to if your kids are on point with everything to your mindset, who, who who's checking you? You know what I mean? Who's checking you? There's not a lot of people who are being checked. So I still think one of the most important things for someone to have is someone who's realistic with them. Realistic. Because it's very easy to have people gas, gas you, you up, up. And, and just have someone say, no, this isn't right. This isn't. But it's not everybody has somebody who has that ability either. Yes. You know? So that, that is also important because if you don't have somebody like that, then you'll have somebody... You'll find out when you come on stage. <laughs> that part. And that's not the time you want to find out when you're on or off. Exactly. You want to know going into it. Going into it. Or, Literally. I mean, I, I see this a lot. I see people make mistakes a lot. And it's not, you know, and there's times where I've reached out to people and they can listen or not listen, but you can see what's going to happen when someone's making mistakes. Oh, or yeah. when they're doing the right thing. Oh, yeah. You have to stay consistent with it. You have to. It, and, there's, there's no way around it. So many people try to take these shortcuts. Oh, I'll get away with this protein shake for this meal. No, you will not. You would not get away with that. You would not get away with skipping the gym and I will go at nighttime because guess what? Now you just messed your routine up and your consistency. Mm -hmm. Now what do you have? Nothing. How important is your positivity in your circle? Very important. I've learned it's, this about you the last few weeks. It, it, it's so important to me because again, I'm an energy based guy, you know, and if I'm, Feeling like it's negative energy, I'm just blocking you out of my circle. I don't, like, there's, again, I, we've talked about this before. There's so much stuff coming at me um, with winning this title um, from people saying that <laughs> Brandon got robbed to um, all this craziness. Aaron is blocking everybody. Aaron is an a-hole. Aaron is this. Aaron is that. But... I block the people. I don't, I don't. There's reason for it. There's correct? reason for it. I'm not just out here just blocking people for the hell of it. No. And again, the person who's saying that, especially like even like Jeremy, like Jeremy's saying I blocked him for no reason. All that, oh, Mr. I'm the victim guy, that, that don't work because there's things out there. The backstory. Yeah. There's a backstory why I blocked you. And the thing is, I don't, I don't, I didn't come into this sport to make friends. I am a true athlete. I, I it, very competitive. I'm man. too competitive to play with people. I don't. I, that's just not how I want to do it. And I, some people were like, "Oh, that's not the right way to go about it." Well, you talking about another man's life? You telling another man how to run his life? No. What I respect though is you've been reserved about you know the response, right? Yeah. I mean, where you could have just ran with it and yeah, I done could, it I exposed yeah. and everything else with. Um, you know, a comeback. Yeah. But, you know, you just keep moving forward. I mean, that's something that I've always, you know, can you can believe with my career, especially, you know, winning and losing yeah. Olympia, you know, holding the title. I mean, you've been there through all those. Like, listen, I was on and off, you know. Right. Unfortunately, like, not every Mr. Olympia winner is going to be 100% every single time. Every single so time. I applaud you right now because, like, you've been better and better, right? Yeah. The, the, the continuation of that sometimes is, is harder, right? You just, you try to land it the same way. You can do Absolutely. everything exactly the same, exactly. but it's just a bad day, right? So you have to learn how to handle that stuff. And I, th I feel like the maturity is there. Yeah. And, you know, you just keep moving forward. You know, you send the message because remember, there's a, there's a world that follows you. Yeah. Absolutely. And now you call yourself the standard, Standard and yeah. there's expectations of that standard. So Absolutely. you know we we are super supportive and uh, you know we're we're super proud. And the, and, the, and the standard isn't just on the stage. It's the standard big, is off the stage. It's a lot of uh, it's it's so many different. You wear a lot of hats. Bro. You wear a lot of hats with that with that word standard, and that's why I call myself the standard because I know I carry myself in a way that when people realize and wake up. 
I was the right choice. For well over a year, I mean, you, we've gone back and forth on yeah. DMs before I even knew Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and you'd comment on my stuff yeah, and be like, goals that. this or goals that. And always respectful, right? And, you know, here you are, like the elite of your world, right? Hey, I'm sitting at the table with this guy. Like, that's big. That's, that's I know, but big. you're you're at that, you're at the top, man. Like, yeah. That's where you need to just, I, mean, I remember telling Phil Heath this. We discussed this on the last podcast, which just launched out. And I said, you know, there was a time where Phil was like, I, I kind of mentored him. Mm -hmm. And then there was a time where I'm like, you need to break and just become your own, right? Yeah. So, you know, you look back and you say, okay, when I mentioned that legacy a few, you know, a few minutes ago, and it's like, okay, what is that going to be? And you're going to, like, today, today is an early starting point for you. Yes. And now you just roll with it and, you know, you're going to write history. Absolutely. They I can't change history. No. And continue to be the elite absolutely make absolutely. everyone proud right that's what i will do i got i got i got like i said i got so many people who who are looking at me um from fans to little kids to my sponsors i have a responsibility to be the best me there's, there's no way you're gonna knock me off of that because again i'm so focused negative energy is out of the way positive energy only we're going to keep doing what we do. It's awesome, man. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Anything else you want to add or? No, man. I just, I mean, I'm just in You're wearing your metal to bed every night or? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, I got it in my bag, actually, <laughs> to be honest. I just brought it out here just to make sure, just in case everybody's like, where's the metal at? It's in my bag. But, um, <laughs> but no, man, just, I, I just really want to say I appreciate everybody who's, Who's, who's really supported me. I know you, you've you been there. Like you said, we've talked. Matt, Matt is always, he's a text message away or, you know, he, he you know, he's like, he likes to voice message people. So, because um, half the time I'm driving <laughs> and someone will text me, I'm like, fuck, I can't. So I just send a voice note. Yeah. Yeah. He so. can't see, you know, half the time. <laughs> well, people don't know that. My left eye was transplanted yeah. and my right eye isn't very good. So. So he's sometimes, not the safest sometimes, driver. He know. is sometimes, not the yeah. safest driver. <laughs> sometimes I'll go to text and I'm like, fuck, I can barely see this. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll just send a voice note. It's easier. That's crazy. But, you know, just like, like I said, man, just I want to thank everybody from, from the sponsors to my family to everybody who really, really, truly supports me and rock with me. Um, this, my sponsors are the best. I you mean, have a lot of sponsors, man. And, and that's one goal. That's, that is God, one you goal that... I had 14 at my peak, man. See, I, I ain't got that many. <laughs> See, I probably got... Listen to you. I got five you said, I, gotta, I gotta still brag on you. <laughs> listen, we, got, we, got, we got the champ in the house. Hey, he's got on, He's got new gold. You know what I I'm love saying? how you it's, did that. You're like, you got a bunch of sponsors. <laughs> I have 14. I have 14. But, you know, I, I mean, I have... I think I have five really... Six really good... good you have a lot, really good, good sponsors. Good he's got a couple me. coming he doesn't know about yet. Uh, oh, you'll yeah. find out. Of course. We'll find out. Hey. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, we got Young LA. I, I love Young LA. I love to swag the gear up. It's 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 just what I like to do. I mean, Celsius has been nothing but love um, from the beginning. Um, Global Formula, Jacob, he, he does a phenomenal job. We're going to just take things to the next level with that stuff. Um, Chula Wear, she's killing it, killing it. And she doesn't just do board shorts. Yeah, she that's does, what I was going to say. She does classic trunks. She and, can make you some posing trunks. She sure for your can. Fit for 50 I used to pay 300 bucks for my posing trunks from CJ. Woo! I don't think she'll charge you that much, Jay. I'll talk to her. Just let me know. Well, I'm not, <laughs> doing, <laughs> I'm not doing a comeback. I'm <laughs> doing fit for 50, but not uh, Just let me stage, know. You know. But I mean, from my tanning company, Flawless Tans, a lot of people don't know about them, but they're, they are a little bit of a smaller company, but they are pretty good. They are really good. So... Um, I hope I'm not missing nobody. Trifecta. Trifecta. I see look, Matt. See, I'm in here. Well, you mentioned that earlier, so but, yeah. you know, even Trifecta, even meeting Greg and at this year's Olympia, it was it was just everything is just so positive with the people that I have in, around me. You know, it, it's I'm I'm blessed, man. Did you I'm, do the booth appearance after the stage? Did he come do the after pre judging? After yeah, pre judging he came I, over I came. and he said and he said, yeah, Oh, I, I, I want and, you said I won and Yeah, and um and see what's crazy. I said, I came early, and the next thing you know, I went to go eat. Yeah. And then the he, freaking so he, restaurant is taking forever. So he, so he comes up, he goes, Hey, I'm a little early. Can I go eat quick? I was like, Yeah, no problem. Like an hour and a half later, he's like, like Where are you? He's like, 
I just sat down for my food. I'm like, these people are not. Right. I mean, <laughs> the, the expo good. was just, it was just, it was hectic. And, and, and that, it, I've never been to an, uh, an expo that, that big besides the LA Fit Expo. Um, so I'm, I was just so overwhelmed and, and just enjoying the experience, man. It was, it was just, just it was a great experience. We all got and, the LA Fit Expo in two I, weeks. I, before, before we jump off, so a style man like yourself. Oh, here we go, Jay. Because I know you got the, like, you're wearing a Celsius jacket. And, yeah. You know, obviously we talk about clothing brands, you know, whatever. Absolutely. And I see you swagged up on your Instagram. I try. Where do you shop? Like, man, what's your uh, go-to? Someone that's in shape, has a good taper, wants to dress fashionable to go out. Like, I saw you at a nightclub the other night with a with a hat on and yeah you were super swagged up where, where's so this outfit th- there's a <laughs> there's a couple different places i love top shop okay it's top man um i love zara zara is yeah, one of my dope. favorite, yeah, yeah. One of my one of my favorite spots, too, spots. Yeah. um there's a little there's a little gym i'm about to throw out there it's a little app called asos okay they also have very similar items to top man and and zara um but believe it or not that suit and that hat from Amazon. Wow. Amazon. I know I buy good jeans I from think Amazon. We let, I think we should let Aaron dress you up once. Amazon. Oh, but I'm, what about the shoe game? The shoe game is different. Okay, the shoe game is different. So We what can't I, talk about it too much. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? But, but how, many, how many Jordan 1s do we own Oh, here? my goodness. Just give, me a, just give me a rough estimate. I'm in a good Jordan 1s, probably about 23. All right, well. She goes probably about 23. <laughs> but I mean, I have from. How many Jordan ones I have? I like fours. How many? How many you have? <laughs> I mean, Jay. It's, yeah, Jay has I, a closet have, full of shoes, bro. I have stuff that I've. He probably gonna, have stuff he doesn't even wear. Of course, I'm yeah. just gonna go to his house and steal like 50 <laughs> pairs. So, that's all you need. so back in a few years ago, I had this thing on Snapchat. It was kicks of the day. Yeah, and I literally would have a guy. I would order shoes every single week to show. Oh wow! And I literally did it for. Like the sneakerheads, so that's how I developed the. And that's what I think. It's coming back. I think what I want to do. It's coming coming back. back. We're not going to talk about it yet. Okay, but it's coming back soon. That that's we're going to have a fitness kicks of the day, and we know how much how uh, fashionable we are. So that is that is one thing that I. I, I really do take pride in dressing, man, and, and especially going to the gym. You, it's just the Dion men- mentality. You look good, you play good. You, yeah, you know what I mean. You, <laughs> there's nothing nothing better than feeling and looking good. You go in the gym, kill it. It's okay to sweat. It's okay. okay well, to, what's the gift to yourself since you won the Mr. Olympia? Nothing. You haven't even celebrated. I bought my kids what they wanted for Christmas. Christmas, yeah. I That's did. a gift, though. It's Not a, everybody that, can do that. Yeah. Very so true. after the Arnold. I will have a big party, and okay, you will I know. be invited. So let me ask you this. After the Arnold, like, what's the, like, you have a good break, right? We're having, a, Olympia's lo- in November, we're so. having a lovely break. We're going to travel. We're going to try to collab with Celsius. We're going to try to collab with Young LA. We're going to try to do a lot of things and, and start moving around. Um, because, again, I've, I've told you this before. Like, you, you've, you've really took in my mindset when it comes to off the stage, like, entrepreneur like you are the goat of that as well if you don't know now you know but you've you've set that standard as well and that is a a path that I also want to follow and the way you work the way you appear the way you remember people's names when we were bro when we went to the New Jersey that I think oh yeah the the appearance appearance. yeah yeah. I forgot we were there together yeah and I'm like remember them from this spot i'm like why were you there so i was there basically off of um was there a sponsor or were you aries nutrition i think his name is pat yeah pat, pat. he had he had messaged me but i was there with professor nuts which i'm no longer with okay um i guess they wanted to reconstruct their whatever the that's right we had so. that outdoor meet and greet yeah there. so we um that was that was an event, but man, just watching you work, I'm like, this man don't stop. He don't stop. So I like that. Like, and you've always been more of a mentor than anything. Even be, like not even saying anything that you're you, you are still a mentor because I look so much into what you do business wise. It's it's just over the top. You you 
you You're surprised to see me over here packing packages bro today, huh? yeah. this man is out here printing stuff <laughs> <laughs> ripping it like what you doing oh man I'm it's all it's it always something funny packing for me. memorabilia like, when, oh, when athletes when i'll reach out to them about whether it's an appearance or a sponsor and and they'll always give me this this line about how busy they are uh, just listen uh, i'm just like they don't the understand. Fuck? No, you're not busy. You're not. You're lazy. And I know people get up pissed off when I say that, but I have the ability to see the top people, not yeah. people that make uh, people that make tens of millions of dollars. Absolutely. And every one of them, when I hit them, they hit me back. Every one of them, when I say you want to do this appearance, they let me know right away. Right away. To where other people will blow it off that have one or two sponsors that make a little bit of money. But but you'll see. You, You'll see where their life goes. Of that. course, you see what I'm saying. The and, decisions and they make like matters. This man, right here. Yes. Like, I, I this dude worked. Yeah. Like he ain't just sitting down just working. Yeah, out I, never, I never home. thought I'd be relevant. It'll be ten years since I came off the stage. Next man, this year. dude is probably still he, the biggest name. He still building. he still gets more appearances. We, we, we could we could easily do we could easily do fifty weekends a year, <laughs> easily. Yeah, and a lot of times ridiculous. it just it just isn't time. And it's taxing. I'm not going to lie. That, like, that, that traveling is no joke. Like, we fly a lot of places, and we fly longer than we land. Like, we went to Arnold, UK, and we were like... We were in the air longer than we were on the ground. Wow. We were on the ground for yeah. 18 hours, 19 hours, something like that. Well, we'll, I mean, be, we'll be at the Arnold, you know. We'll be at the Arnold there. We'll be at the Arnold, UK, We'll be most likely. We'll be at the FIBO. And, yeah. So, I mean, uh, again, it's I know I'm a probably be there with you guys because that's that's one thing that I, I have to do it's not that i'm i want to do it's what i have to do especially with holding this title my face needs to be yep. out there i need to motivate and inspire and do what i do for my people you will that's awesome keep it up we will. all right well we appreciate you coming on dude i'm glad you, you made it to town it was kind Absolutely. of a surprise to me we too bad about your raiders yesterday <sighs> yo he literally my texted money, me last yeah. night my money was mom. on i didn't know if it, i didn't know if, when i saw the instagram post i wasn't sure if um it was i didn't know if that was a pass i thought, oh, I yeah, thought it was yeah. the day after the olympia to be honest oh see i was supposed to go to that yeah, game too yeah. against the patriots but no i didn't i went I to didn't. that game did you yeah i was there yeah see yeah. so i get last night i get a message like hey i'm in town you want to work out tomorrow i'm like <laughs> Fuck, thanks for the heads up, dude. <laughs> no, he texts me. I text him and go, you want to do the podcast with I tomorrow? said, dude, I'm open all day tomorrow. Yeah. So, Sweet. So this it is aw- awesome you came on, man. We really look forward to seeing your next dominance at the Arnold Classic. Yes. Early prediction? A dub. You don't come, he's not coming to lose. I'm not coming to lose. I'm, I'm, I'm still on prep. I've been on prep. I took a week off, which I even caught that little sickness, but it is what it is. I'm... That was so you with. caught that sickness. You could have went ham and ate whatever you want. You would have gained a fucking power. <laughs> I could have, but the thing is, I I stayed tight and I'm still I'm still pushing. I'm still pushing. I, there's, I, there's no let up. Well, we got to get that YouTube channel cranking. So that is definitely what we got to do. But make sure you guys follow this guy. Um, he's heading obviously to big big places, yep. continuous now. So we want to just thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate you guys having me. Thank you.